fun and doing this with me, um, especially on a Friday. I know everybody loves to just go crazy on Fridays. So we're just going to have a little informal, you know, interview type style chat. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about your time in the program, um, you know, kind of where you came from to where you are now. And then maybe a little bit of like wins that you had in the program. We're just going to cover all of our bases here. How does that sound? Okay. Perfect. Sounds good. So can you just give the the audience a little background on you and what your symptoms looked like uh, and your life looked like before you had joined okay. any of my um, programs? Well, in 2020, the wonderful year of 2020, um, I, was, <laughs> I was diagnosed with IC and I had been, but I had been dealing with pelvic pain for probably about five years prior to that and had been to a pelvic or physical therapist. But then in 2020, it got really bad stress in my life got really bad. My husband was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, and I have a son with special needs. So um, uh, it just everything went crazy. So um, I ended up having a lot of all of a sudden, I still had the pelvic pain, but the pelvic pain increased significantly to where I couldn't sit, I couldn't um, function, I had to, I lived with a heating pad, um, I was in tears all the time. And, and then I ended up having a whole lot of um, burning and pain when I w would go to the bathroom. So then I decided, okay, I think, <laughs> I think I need to go see somebody. So then I was diagnosed then with it, like, just that same day. Um, is that all you want me to cover? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, how did you um, feel when you got that diagnosis? It was scary. Well, because... Like I said, that same exact day, my husband was diagnosed with Parkinson's, and then they hand me this list of food that I cannot have, and and I'm like, oh my goodness, how am I going to survive <laughs> uh, both diagnoses mm -hmm. with not being able to have coffee? That was my very first, <laughs> or chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this is going to oh work gosh. too well. <laughs> Right. No, when I when I was diagnosed and they told me about the diet, I literally said I'm not doing that. And I did it for years. So yeah. good for you for actually right. listening to that. Because I'm like, well, I don't want to feel like this. So if this is what but what they did is they just send you handed you a piece of paper, said stay away from these things. That's all they said, in and out. That's it. So then I had to do my own research. Right. And then Exactly. Exactly. So then you go home, you go on the internet, and like, what kind of things too were you finding? Things. It was too confusing. Like, it was, the diet did come up there, like, stay away from these things. But then I was also reading, stay away from gluten, stay away from dairy, stay away from sugar. So me being a rule follower, that's what I did. Because <laughs> I am. I'm a rule <laughs> follower. So I, I cut everything out. Everything out. All, all that. I, I went above and beyond, and for two years, that's where I was. Yes. Two years is a long time. Were you getting just, just, like, super bored with your diet? Did you have any sort of, like, physical changes that were related to, yes. like, not having that variety in your diet? Hair. And um, I've always had a lot of hair, and um, thankfully, because it's curly, you can't tell as um, but I have lost a, at least probably a good 20% of my 20 to 30% of my hair. And it's finally starting to come back now that I added right. some foods back. Yes. Now that you're nourishing your body. Um, yeah, that's something that I don't think a lot of people are aware of is the, the risks that come along with restricting your diet and, you know, along with like weight loss that can happen. Um, you can also have signs of nutrient deficiency, yeah. like hair loss. Um, you could have fatigue. You could have, like, skin that easily bruises. Um, you could have, like, bone pain. Like, really random things could start happening, and it may may not be obvious at first, or you may just be like, oh, I'm fatigued. It could be this, or it could be this. And, you know, you, you may not even be looking at your diet. So I don't know how I I got on that tangent. <laughs> uh, but also, I mean, 
talk about the emotional side of that. Oh. Like, were you missing out on those foods? Oh, yeah. Did you have yes, FOMO when you my family because I live with my husband and two teenagers, and you know, food is their life. And I have a daughter who loves to cook, and um, so she's. But thank thank God she was one who loves to cook, but was very mindful, so she would help find some icy friendly stuff for me. But um, yes, and I ended up not doing a lot of stuff. I you know, for two years, I, I wouldn't go to restaurants very much because it was just depressing. I didn't like going to family gatherings. I didn't like going to church functions because then you have to explain to everybody why you're only eating this little, you know, one piece of thing on your, <laughs> your plate and or have to bring your own food. I would have to do that. And, you know, it was it was very depressing. So I definitely had zero quality of life. I was like, this is what it's going to mm -hmm. be like forever. Yeah. We're because nobody tells you that maybe you should try putting stuff back in. It, it came across to you. Exactly. Thank you, Lord. Exactly. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's so common for people to not know that you're supposed to add that back in, all those foods. Um, the concept of the elimination mm -hmm. diet isn't always explained by the doctor that is handing you that list. It's kind of like an open-ended right. thing, like stop eating and drinking these items and that's it. Good luck. Right. We're not going to tell you how long you're supposed to do that for. So that is something that I'm seeing a lot of people have issues with. I'm seeing a lot of stress and anxiety surrounding eating, food fear. Um, yes, did you feel like you were experiencing any of that? I was always afraid to eat anything. I thought for mm -hmm. sure that it was going to cause a flare every time. Yeah. And we can talk about, you know, what you've discovered your triggers are and um, a little bit more on that in a bit. But were there other things that weren't food related that yeah, your IC was holding you back from? With um, doing a lot of very physical activities because I also have pelvic floor dysfunction. And when everything is all flared constantly, I, I found that, you know, just couldn't, go on bike rides or really long walks or hiking and stuff like that on uneven terrain which I love to do or you know walking on the beach things like that I I just couldn't do or I'd need to go to the bathroom or it was just all a hot mess <laughs>